From the management side, we have Mr. Tachi Jain, Joint Managing Director, Mr. Rajiv Thapur, CFO, Mr. Prani, he is a Senior Designer from our Traffic Division, Mr. Prabhjo, and myself, Karan Walia, Company Secretary. Now, I request Mr. Tachi Jain to proceed on the matter. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for the overwhelming response. Uh, apologies for the cramped conditions because we had 25 confirmations, otherwise, we would have taken a bigger hall. So, apologies uh, for, for people coming in and putting in more chairs. I see some, some of you may have to actually stand. So, but thank you so much. Uh, this is our first uh, public meet in person. We do a analyst, uh, we, are, we do a con call every quarter. India and Foreign posts that uh, con call. But uh, as one large investor told me that thanks to your con call but only clients of a particular brokerage are coming. What are you doing to reach out to other people? And I realized we were, uh, we were at fault and we started being corrected this year. So our intention is to do this every year. Our intention is to do it in February, March, uh, depending on the convenience, uh, uh, my convenience, but February or March, <coughs> not after the final year because this way you get an idea of the cotton, cut, current cotton crop, what are, we have more visibility now. Uh, when we come in in June, then you have less visibility. Uh, we have visibility only for about one quarter or so. Uh, once again, my apologies for all of you standing. We didn't anticipate so many people. I'm really sorry. Uh, you've all shown so much of faith in our company. I'm uh, sorry to make uh, to this to this to, to this to all of you in our first conference. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what we do is we realize that a physical meet gives us far more advantages in terms of showing you sides of the company that in a con call you can't do. So we will. Uh, show you a different light of Vardhaman. Of course, one is a standard presentation we make every time, but we want to show you a different side of Vardhaman that you don't normally get to see in our conference. So, this is, of course, the overview. We are one of the largest distinct integrated textile manufacturing companies in the country. So we are present in five businesses. It's yarn and fabric, which are the main businesses of the standard owned company. And then we have uh, sewing thread, acrylic fiber, and garments. These are in subsidiaries of the company. And we have a special advice team, which is an associate company of the uh, We have, uh, move very fast to the next one. In all our products, we are market leaders, either first or second in the market. Uh, if sometimes in size, but size is not our important criteria, our most important criteria is quality and customer satisfaction. So, for example, in acrylic fiber, we are the smallest company, not only in the country, in the world, we are the smallest company. I think very few companies can say we are the smallest company in the world, but in acrylic fiber, we know we are the smallest company in the world. And yet, our profitability is amongst the best in the world. And most important part is our customers are very happy with us, so their charges gave us a premium. That's why. So, in every, in alloy steel also, we are considered the second best steel company in the country. So otherwise, people don't know as Vardhaman in steel, but in the alloy steel business in which we are, we are the second best company in the country. Uh, sewing thread is number two, and in several segments of yarn, we are number one or number two. And in most segments, we would be probably number one. Another big strength of Vardhaman is we have several global alliances. We have, we have several uh, alliances with Japanese companies. We have a few joint ventures. Uh, we have had several technical alliances. So our fabric business was started with uh, uh, alliance with Tokai Senko, which was the largest independent processor of fabric in Japan. <coughs> uh, our fabric, fiber and yarn dyeing was set up in technical collaboration with Nihon Senmo Dyeing Company. Again, it was the largest fiber dyeing company in the country. Some of you, if you can please come up this side, uh, so that the door, some more people, I believe some of you are still outside. And again, my apologies for making you stand. We never realized we'll have so many people. It's the first thing, so we'll be better prepared next time. My apologies. Uh, and in uh, uh, acrylic fiber set up in joint venture and technical alliance with uh, uh, Exxon, which is a subsidiary of Toyomo and Marubeni Corporation. The current subsidiaries we have a joint venture is with Marubeni in VMT spinning, which is a subsidiary. And uh, we have American Eiffels, 
advantage of us as a swing trade. The biggest advantage that we've had of so many Japanese alliances is the Japanese culture of quality. Quality made into the product and the culture in the company of quality and continuous improvement. And we have some clips of workers doing improvements that have happened uh, in our company. So we'll show you some of that. Key financial you all seen anyway. Nine months figures are available. So fat of uh, uh, 155, uh, fat of 54 million dollars, and EBITDA of 155 million dollars. Next, please. So the textile sector, it's about 108 billion dollars. This is both exports and domestic consumption. Second largest employment generator after agriculture. 49 million spent on the capacity of the country. So highly fragmented, spread across 1300 mills. Uh, out of this 49 million, Vartaman's capacity is 1.1 million spent. So we are uh, the largest uh, spending company by far, but still we have just a little over 2% of the country's capacity. 27% contribution in India's foreign exchange earnings, 14% to industrial product production, and 5% to the GDP. Just a snapshot of what the Indian textile sector is. Next, please. India versus China. So, 120 million spent with China's capacity against our 49 million. But between India and China, we control pretty large part of the world's spending capacity. Cotton, we have now become the largest producer of cotton in the world. Uh, and increasingly, our gap will, will become larger in that. This is a huge source of competitive advantage for the Indian spending industry. <coughs> And global yarn production, uh, we are just 13% against China 54%. The other uh, few factors we have to put in is consumption. India's consumption of textile is 4 kilos per capita. China is 80, world average is 13. So just imagine over the next 8-10 years, if India moves up from 4 kilos to 6 kilos or 8 kilos, the kind of increase in domestic consumption, that's going to be and that is going to be the great driver of uh, textile industry growth over the next 10 to 15 years. It won't happen next year, but over the next 10 to 15 years, uh, I think the domestic consumption story is going to become a bigger part of the story. Next please. That's the journey. 62 we were incorporated. And this is the golden year because 65 is when we started production with 6,000 spindles in uh, Ludhiana. And that 6,000 spindles of spinning capacity today has become 1.1 million spindles, 110 million meters of fabric, sewing thread, 20,000 tons of acrylic fiber, and about 2 million pieces a year of garments and steel pieces. So over the years, uh, over the 50 years, we have had about 5 periods of consolidation. So roughly every 8-10 years, when you grow, then you need to digest and consolidate build that foundation. So current year, we have been announcing in our con call that this is a year of, this is a period of consolidation of the group because we have grown so fast, now you need to consolidate. What do you mean by consolidation? It means spreading out every bit from the last asset, the bottlenecking, improving systems, investing in IT, investing in automation. Those are the kind of things that we are doing currently which are strengthening the company significantly. So we believe this period of consolidation will cut you for a year or so, but we have now announced our next phase of expansion. Next please. That's the structure. So all businesses of the promoter family are all in listed entity. There is not a single business that we have outside of the listed space. And everything is covered really under Vardaman Textile and its subsidiary. Except for Vardaman Special Steel, which is currently an associate company, it used to be a division of Vardaman Textiles. It was hydro into a separate company. The intention is to remove it totally from Vardaman Textile. SEBI in the, in the demerger has asked us to retain holding for five years since the uh, demerger. That was 11, March 11. So next year we will be over from the five year restriction. In all probabilities, so after that some stage, this stake that Vardaman Textile owns in uh, the steel company at some stage will be divested uh, to the promoter family. So uh, then we will have two entities really, Vardaman Textile <coughs> and Vardaman Special Steels. And the subsidiaries, all of them, all, the reason to put in the subsidiaries was joint venture partners. 
except for retail investments, which is not put in out here. Retail investments is a pure investment company. Originally, this company was a joint venture of the thread company. That was the original reason why this company was formed. And that thread business was demerged from that, consolidated into one whole thread business, and then separated to get to the joint venture part. So A and E, who are our partners in Yand and Thread, invested into the demerged entity so that they became part. They are the world number two thread company. Next, please. What really are our competencies? Are the first, first and foremost are the cotton procurement abilities. So for an FMCG company, you look at distribution ability. The ability to distribute its products. For an agriculture produce, producing uh, product company, you need to make sure that you have buying capability. So we have buying capabilities across all the major markets in India. We have a strong field force team. We are able to select cotton from the fields, which then goes in for ginning. And we also get some of the cotton gin in our own control. So in many cases, we just get it ginned and in some cases we can get the ginning done in our control so that for really high quality customers we can have far less contamination and far better quality control. So, but this is an important part and many people ask us that you know when you change your policy depending on uh, the estimates of cotton that you see, no, our cotton procurement policy remains the same. We will as of March end have between six to eight months stock of cotton. Uh, so sometimes our buying finishes in February, sometimes in March, sometimes in April. Because after April, good quality cotton is not available in the country. So I would look at the other way around. If a spinning company does not have cotton in the balance sheet, then you should be worried. This current year, for example, we were clear that cotton prices will fall we will have inventory losses and we kept saying that in a con call and yet we bought the cotton. Knowing fully well we will have inventory losses because if you don't buy the cotton by April, what we do in June and July? You will not have cotton to service the kind of customers we have. And the kind of customers Vardaman has are the customers who expect quality, regularity and those are the strengths of Vardaman, consistency of quality. The 30s comb to the 30s comb to the 30s comb. But why does 30s come from Vardaman get 5 cents a kilo or 10 cents a kilo sometimes higher than the others because of consistency of quality and that happens because we are able to make sure that quality cotton is available to produce quality yarn. You can produce, use good quality cotton and produce poor quality yarn but you can't use poor quality cotton to produce good quality yarn. So that's, that's a given. Employee engagement and culture of innovation. This is a very major strength of Vardaman. We have about 25,000 employees and almost all our plants are non-unionized. Very few companies can talk about and all our production employees are on company roles. We don't believe in having workers on contract. Of course we have contractor workers on the, on the company <coughs> premises but those are primarily for areas like loading and loading or uh, gardening security in some cases, housekeeping, those are the areas where we would have workers on contract. Production workers are all on company units. Except for a steel company where some of the production workers were also on contract, but since I took over the company four years ago, even those are gradually absorbing the good workers from the contractor working on the company roles. So my approach and our company's approach is opposite to Indian industry's approach of having as many workers on contract because people think workers are something to be handled, it's a hassle. But as we believe workers are an asset to the company as long as you use their brains and your heart together. That's something that Vardaman has developed over the years. As far as our, most of our uh, management, almost all our employees spend large amount of time with us. Top management, everybody in top management has spent over 20 years with the company. Sina management, everybody has spent over 15 years with the company except for our head of IT who has come from outside. But all operating people are people who understand the company culture through and through and have spent several years with them. Many people are still in the first jobs. So in fact, the sixth whole time director of the company, 
I am the only one who has worked outside. I worked for a year with Hindustan Lever before joining Vardhaman 25 years ago. So I am the only whole time director who has joined somewhere else before joining Vardhaman. The remaining five, Vardhaman is the first job they joined. Economy of scale and operational efficiencies. At 1.1 million spindles, we have huge economy of scale in terms of setting up plant, procurement of cotton, procurement of uh, spare parts because one purchase department is procuring spare parts across 1.1 million spindles or across the 1300 rooms. That gives us huge economies of scale. We are able to get better prices for our spare parts. This is a economy of scale that everybody understands. But this I think is a smaller advantage of the economy of scale. The bigger advantage of economy of scale really is that you can be large well diversified and be large and of meaningful size in each capacity, for example. So in our 1.1 million spindles, we are present in Milanjian. We are the largest producer in Milanjian. We are present in gas Mercerian. We are the largest producer of gas Mercerian in the country. We are present in Stretchian. We are the largest producer of Stretchian in the country. Compact yarns. We are either the largest or amongst the largest producer of stretch yarns. Acrylic yarns. We are the largest producer of acrylic yarns in the country. So I am just saying we are so diversified and present a meaningful size in each one of these product types. This is the biggest advantage of scale. And the other advantage of this is these capacities are flexible. So, for example, today that Milan joint capacity, tomorrow that can make cotton yarn and you can switch from one to the other. Or some capacities of cotton can move to blended yarns mm -hmm. and vice versa. So this gives us the possibility that if one segment is doing better than the other, we can switch some capacity, not all, some capacity can switch to this will be huge advantage in India. Customer oriented approach. This is a, a stretch that we have that people think textile is a commodity. But ultimately it is a fashion business. <coughs> so you need to understand what are the trends in the market and that can happen through direct relationship with customers. And across management as well as the senior people, we have direct access and direct relationship with all our key customers. Uh, I personally have several personal relationships with the key customers, many customers. I started because when I joined the company, I joined from Hindustan Lever. I was in consumer markets. I am used to going shop to shop with customers. And when I joined Vardhaman, we were not as customer oriented then. I remember the time when I started visiting customers, a rumor spread that Vardhaman is having difficulty in selling yarn, the owners have to go to the market. So, but gradually people understood that this is the new way of managing where you have to be customer centric. And then we started directly dealing with the large institutional customers and that has given us tremendous advantage. Diversity and value added products I already talked about. Technology upgradation and continuous process improvement. This is something we've done <coughs> constantly. So one advantage of being in several product categories is that we can modernize buying new equipment for product that needs it and use that replaced equipment somewhere else for product that needs that and use that, take it out. So there are times we have moved a machine three times. So the new machine has gone to one product, that, that older machine gone to a second product and that machine gone to a third product. So for example in a swing thread company, our spindles completely written off in 10 years, running since 77. So completely written off then revalued and then written off again. That is the advantage of having a company with, fan with fantastic, the wrong word, but strong maintenance practices and this continuous process improvement. So we have at the same time the latest technology and the older technology, but the older technology maintains so well, the product is almost as good as the new technology. So, which is why we are able to continuously add new capacity and yet average cost per spindle remains controlled because the older spindles and the older machines are also running very well. Uh, one thing you need to understand out here <coughs> is we have a depreciation chart of course, but each part of the machine has, has replaceable parts. Otherwise the ring frame is basically a cast iron part. So, a spindle <coughs> has a life of let's say 10 years, average 10 years. So which means for 1.1 million spindles, we have to replace roughly 100,000 spindles a year. Now a spindle costs about 700 rupees. 
So that is replaced and charged to P and L as part of manufacturing expense. Carding wires, doffing wires, combs, <coughs> rings, the rings and the spindle. The life of a ring is about four years. So 250,000 spindles would be changed every year. All this is charged to P and L as maintenance expenditure. So which is why the depreciation charge that we have is an excessive charge. And this year I believe the government has changed the depreciation norm from 10 years to 8 years. So suddenly 170 crore rupees of extra depreciation over and above an already excessive depreciation had to be charged. One month to our board to the decision, we will charge it off. Many textile companies have retained the 10 year. Because the government gives flexibility, you can, if you can, justify it. Nobody can justify 10 years. Because the life of the asset is 15 to 20 years. How can you justify 10 years? So we said, let's follow the government norms of charging everything. So this year, between 14, 15 and 15, 16, we'll have disproportionately high depreciation after that new norm. Integrated business. So yarn and fabric has a tremendous advantage to get. What are the advantages? One, you have a customer in-house. So which has significantly improved our yarn business. Which is why all weaving customers like our yarn very much. Because we are getting daily feedback in and out. And that daily feedback has honed our yarn quality. I remember, uh, so there was a time my wife was running our fabric business. She set up our fabric business. And I was running the spinning yarn next door. And believe me, wife is the boss anywhere at home. At work, she is your biggest customer at that time. She was taking life help for me. So I had to work extra hard to make sure the yarn quality was improved so that I had peace at home. But the other advantage of integrated business also, when yarn prices fall, the fabric margins improve. When yarn prices rise, <coughs> fabric margins go down. Overall, as a company, our margins are more stable than a standalone fabric business or a standalone spinning business. So which is why we are saying, we are able to say that 18 to 22 percent is the normal EBITDA range of our company. Last year was 25.6 and we said this is not sustainable and the margins came down. Uh, that time we were the only textile company that kept saying, no, these are, these are good results, we are having good results, we are happy, but these are lucky results. There are factors that are supporting us which are not sustainable and these results cannot be repeated. Uh, Financial strength, we are, I think, the only AA rated textile company, amongst the larger companies at least. And we are amongst the only textile companies that can raise money in the CP market. So we are able to raise money at 8.4% huh? kind of thing in the CP market. So our cost of money also becomes lower thanks to that. And all our term loans are our very competitive rates. So those are the advantages. And once the question when people ask us is what happens when Tufts goes away? When Tufts goes away, we'll be again one of the few textile companies that can raise money in the bond market because many uh, uh, fund managers talk to us also. Currently, we are investors in funds, but tomorrow a time will come when we start issuing long-term debt. Uh, we have got indications from several funds that there, there is interest, appetite for uh, debt coming in from other market. And a strong rate. Yeah, next please. So manufacturing capacity is spread primarily in Madhya Pradesh, three plants, that's our biggest location. Roughly half our group is there in those three factories. One of the factories is so large that Tiger walked into a factory about and a half years ago. It took us a month to drive the Tiger out. And imagine 3,000 employees in the factory and a Tiger in the factory. And our chairman had to call out the chief minister because the forest department, we realized then the forest department is different, the wildlife department is different. <laughs> and you were told then if something happened to the tiger, you had it. <laughs> Same tiger, of course, somebody, some human goes no problem. Uh, then uh, Himachal is the second biggest location. And Punjab is the third biggest location, though we are still part of Punjab based group. Headquarters, of course, is there. One small plant in Karundra in Tamil Nadu, one small plant in Vishakhapatnam. These are said plants. And branches are spread across the country, primarily are spread branches. Next please. That's what happens in the value addition to the chain. So 1.2 kilos of cotton fiber becomes 0.84, this is combed yarn. 0.84 kilos of yarn, it becomes 2.67 meters of gray fabric. 
becomes 2.4 meters of process fabric, becomes two trousers. So 1.8 dollars of cotton fiber becomes 2 dollars 80 cents of yarn, 3 dollars 50 of gray fabric, 6 dollars of process fabric, 13 dollars of garment which you'll buy for 50 dollars or 60 dollars in the market. So that's just an idea of the value. Next please. So what are the strengths of yarn business? 12 production plants across the country. Technical tie-ups, serious business, I think we already discussed that. And here are some of the other products we got. Cotton live cell, cotton silk, cotton modal, cotton tensile. So we are in several blended yarns also in addition to just cotton yarn. And we are also in fine counts. Now what happens with that is the fluctuation in the yarn comes down. So a lot of people are asking me over the last two months about a particular South Indian company and they are making lots of Pima based yarn. So we make lots of Pima based yarns. We are the third largest importer of Pima yarns in the country. We don't talk about that because it's a small part of the overall size, but we are the third largest Pima importer in the country. So in every segment that we are in, as I said, we are pretty large and that's the biggest strength of our yarn business. Next please. This is something we thought we'll show you the Vardaman <coughs> as an FMCG player. This is a small part of the business, hand knitting yarn. But this is the part that makes us famous. Vardaman is a brand name which is recognized by women across North India from the western parts of North India to the northeastern. <coughs> uh, can you just open the door, please? I think somebody's coming. Please come in. Please come in. Yeah. I'm sorry. We are having to make you stand. So, some of, can you please move this side? Some of you, I think there's some people outside. <coughs> and I'm apologizing again. We never anticipate. Thank you so much for this response. Uh, we should have obviously ordered a bigger call. Has everybody come in? Yeah, thanks. So, uh, this product gives us tremendous brand equity <coughs> because housewives, women across North India know us. And this can be capitalized at some stage. Are there any plans today? There are no plans today to capitalize this. But we have this. So there are 4,000 outlets which supply our hand knitting yarn. We have 40% share of the organized sector, 30% of the total market. Roughly 6 million consumers are consuming our product. Continuous technology upgradation, uh, product development, 45 sub brands. Effective use of electronic and print media for mass communication. How many of you have seen our Bardhaman ads? Very few, right? Very few. You are not a target uh, audience. So I am so happy you haven't seen our ads because if you have seen our ads, that there are guys are mis misdirecting uh, our ads. We have got some of the ads that we will show you. Over the years, we have had several Miss Indias also who have been our brand ambassadors. We have had people like Renuka Shahane. Uh, of, uh, who was pretty famous uh, many years ago. Ham Aapke Hai Kaun, the Bhabi who played that and she's been in several uh, TV series. And she has been a brand ambassador. And another famous TV uh, actress. Huh? Huh. Uh, what was the series she was famous for? Huh. So, so, yeah. so, you know, these are the people who are famous otherwise, but our target audience identified with these women. So we've had some of these women as our brand ambassadors. And of course, women magazines, our designs and all, our standards. So Vardhaman Yarn really gives us that answer. Next please. <coughs> Changing spreads in cotton yarn. So cotton will keep fluctuating and yarn catches up with the lead or with the lag. So about 0.9 to 1.2 dollars, that's the kind of spread. Of course, 2011 you'll see is a blip, which was an absolute black swan event. Because people say it's a fluctuating industry. Yes, it's a fluctuating industry. But what happened in 2011 was absolutely unforeseen because every week, every two weeks, you were having an all-time 150-year high. Now, all of you know in an agricultural produce, unless there's a famine, there's no way you can have an all-time high. You can have a high, you can have a low. All time low means an absolute glut and all time high means total famine. But every fortnight a new 150 year high when cotton moved from 80 cents to 212 cents over a period of 3-4 months. It was because speculators got into this act. When the commodity top dropped, 
put in commodity, commodities going up, so put in commodities, put in this, put in cotton, thak, cotton going up, put more in cotton going up, going up and so on. And finally, Mr. Maran, who was the textile minister then, put a ban on cotton and exports. And suddenly, on that year, which would have been the best year ever for textile industry, you ban cotton and exports and everything came crashing down. So that was a blip. But otherwise, it will fluctuate, but between 0.8 to 1.2 or so. Next, please. That's the fabric business. I think this is the business that we want to concentrate on because this is the business that will be growing faster, has been growing faster than the yarn business, and will grow faster than the yarn business in the future. Uh, currently, we are at 110 million meters of processed fabric, and we've just announced a new expansion of about 45 to 50 into printed, printed fabric and compete with the Indian brands for the women apparel in the Indian retail market. That's not the agenda. Our agenda is just line completion <coughs> because many of let's a gap comes to us and says for this variety of women's dress, I have so many pieces in piece dyed, so many in yarn dyed and so many in prints. And we say, sorry, we don't have prints. So that becomes a problem for our customers. And our customers are driving us to go into this. So it's a line extension rather than entering into the printed fabric business. I hope that distinction is clear. So, so uh, but when we put up capacity, we always need scope for expansion. So if this becomes a good business, it becomes an opportunity in the future to grow this faster than the others. So, uh, otherwise, we have several special things like liquid ammonia, Teflon, NanoCat, ETI, etc. We have our designer with us. We'll show you a fabric collection and a presentation because many people don't understand we are a textile company, but textile is actually fashion. So we present our spring summer collection, we present our autumn winter collection, we go to the fairs, we go to the designers, our designers interact with the designers of key brands, and from that emerges what finally goes in to the making of the shirt. As far as GAP is concerned, we are amongst their largest, we are perhaps their largest supplier in the world. So we are able to, many people even today have asked this question, can you compete with China? So we are, if you are competing for GAP business, GAP is not concerned about India. They are concerned about good quality fabrics available at competitive prices for their apparel with right service. So Waterman is able to do that, competing for global business with any supplier anywhere in the world. So we are absolutely competitive and we have market price based transfer pricing between a yarn business and fabric business. So there is always a competitive healthy tension between the two businesses. And uh, uh, this business has the possible, it is spread between distributors is 30% of the business which is domestic. Now this is going to smaller brands of the country and some smaller exporters. About 11% uh, of our business goes to domestic brands, uh, Madura Garments, Color Plus, uh, Park Avenue, Urban Group, so that's the brands, 11%. Uh, buying houses is 38%. <coughs> buying houses means a Gap, CNA, Marks and Spencer, where the brand is specifying the fabric. The brand is specified, this is a Vardaman fabric, so many meters at this price to be sold to either an Indian guy or a Bangladeshi guy. So Indian fabric for Vardhaman would go to primarily in India or Bangladesh or Sri Lanka. Unlikely the fabric from India will go to Vietnam. Similarly, unlikely the fabric from China will come to India because lead time in supply chain is a very important part because this is fashion business, you have to be in the stores in there. Yeah. And we are spread, this is a, uh, we planned it very well. There are top four customers I'm joking, it's by chance. But top four customers are in the top four in four different geographies. So our largest customer is from the US, our second largest customer is from the Euro from Europe, our third largest customer is from Japan from India and fourth largest from Japan. So we are spread across all segments. In the Japanese design house we now have a strategic alliance which is going to become of huge advantage in the years to come. Uh, this company with whom we are tying, we have tied up. This company has roughly 30% market share, more than 30% market share in the Japanese market. And that's a strategy alliance partner. We are developing strategies for fabric into Japan and fabric of this design house into other parts. So that's a strategy which unfolds over the years. Next, please. 
the thread business. Uh, this is a joint venture with A and E. Now, thread is what goes into stitching of a panel. So, if the panel business the country grows, thread will grow automatically. But in addition to that, there are several other small, small niche segments of thread business. The passport has some thread into it. So, we, we are into that passport thread business. Your tea bags have thread into that. So, we, we are into that business. Women use that for vanity products, for threading, etc. So, our thread goes into vanity products. Embroidery. So, there's a kite flying. So, lots of different products. Vardaman kite flying thread is one of the key products we smuggle into Pakistan across the border. So, you know, there are all kinds of things which happen with thread. Uh, and our joint venture partners, the world number two in India, Vardaman is number two. And this business will continue to have a stable business margin, doesn't fluctuate too much, uh, and grow steadily. Doesn't require too much of capex to grow, uh, because we are buying a lot of yarn from outside, from the outside market. So we, when we invest, we invest in small, so we don't really need to announce that we're expanding, but small, small investments need to happen. Next, please. A credit fiber business. This was a backward integration. Because we were the largest consumer of credit fiber in the country, good quality credit fiber was not available in the country. That was the reason we got into this business. Uh, this company has since become debt free. The company will have operating margin between uh, uh, operating profit between 30 to 50 crores. It fluctuates because we are a price taker as far as our major raw material, the is concerned. Acrylic nitride. The major consumption is ABS and the raw material is of course the petrol chain. So we have no control over prices, no way to forecast prices, we are a total price taker. Uh, and many people have asked this question, uh, there is a cash file in this company, what are your plans of distributing this cash? So we are thinking of some expansion plans. Over the next little bit of time we will either have an expansion plan in mind or we might start distributing the cash. But as of now, there is no concrete plan to distribute and we are investing those products that money, uh, roughly 220 crores is the liquid cash available in the company, which is also available for the group in case of any cash emergency. <coughs> Next please. Steel business, we are in <coughs> forging quality alloy steel business. Uh, it was a 250 crore, three, uh, roughly 300 crore business before we started investing in that business. We have saved it to roughly 750 crores. So in five years we have grown from 300, when we started, when we demerged this business in 9, 10, let's say it was about 250 crores. And March 11 is when we decided to grow this business, that was the reason we demerged it. We invested in this business, uh, currently still losing money because steel business is having a tough time. But we see better times ahead, so hopefully next year we should be in back in profit. So, garment business, please ignore this business. Look at it as an option only, because this is a business we got into with our joint venture partners, and this was a condition of our joint venture partners for giving us technology for liquid ammonia. They said if you want liquid ammonia treatment, you have to put up a garment factory together, and that's why we put that up. Will we grow this business? I don't know. It depends on how successful this business is. If this business becomes successful, as of now it is not successful. But as we close this year, we will break even this year, which means our second half is definitely profitable. Next year we should be fine. The returns are looking good in this business now. So, which means if after a year, at least condition would be right for us to think whether we want to grow this business or not. But again, this is run an arm's length business, that means fabric is transferred from Vartman Textile into this fabric at market rate prices. Next please. Some financials. Have you already seen the financials? Key thing is debt equity continuously coming lower. 0.9 is the gross debt equity, net debt equity and uh, will be even lower when we end this year because there are liquid investments in the company. Uh, one key thing I keep sharing everybody, please look at return on capital employed as EBITDA on capital employed and not as EBIT on capital employed because depreciation is a charge. In China they charge often 15 years, we charge of assets in 8 years and suddenly a balance sheet will be and it looks very different. The other thing to look at, all these numbers are reported on 31st March numbers. 
capital employed is 31st March number and 31st March is a bloated balance sheet because of high cotton stocks and therefore relatively higher debt and higher assets. But all numbers are reported on the 31st March. EBITDA margins, we have been lucky we got those two spikes but otherwise as I said 18 to 22 percent will remain the normal figure now. Earlier those figures were lower. As the integration has happened, as more fabric has come in, that's the main reason why the margin has slipped higher and the variation is going. Next, please. Okay, financially, you all seen that. Next, please. Uh, CapEx, uh, last year we have done about modernization, uh, roughly about 400 crores we spent. But yarn production has moved up from 470 tons to 515 tons per day. So, this has happened without any capital expansion really. This is what I meant by consolidation, We're sweating more from the assets, de-bottlenecking, improving productivity, uh, comparing across units and getting people. One big advantage of having large number of units is you can benchmark across our units and each one of our units is amongst the best. So, <coughs> you're comparing amongst the best because well, some area one company, one plant is better and some area the other plant is better. We transfer people across plants because all are our own resources and we are able to bring about more uniformity of culture. Next. Yeah, that's it. These are the management. So, Mr. Oswal is our chairman and director. I am here in front of you. I am an engineer from ID Delhi and an MBA from Ahmedabad. I happen to be a gold medalist of my batch. And my batch is the famous batch of uh, the entrepreneurs. So, Nirmal Jain of India Infoline, Rashish Shah, Nokri.com. So, these are, that's, so I am famous because I have famous batch mates. <laughs> My wife, Suchita Jain, she, she is really the entrepreneur. I joined this group uh, after marriage. So, I, I come from a professional family. My father was a government service in railways. I joined Bardhaman after my marriage. Uh, Mr. B.K. Chaudhary joined as a trainee in 1973. He heads the affiliate by the company. Mr. D.L. Sharma, both joined batchmates. He also joined in 1973. Neeraj Jain, uh, over 20 years, again joined as a trainee. And Mr. Sidhu, who is the director in charge of our Baddi operations. He has joined the group again about 35, 40 years ago. So, and Rajiv Thakur at CFO also in his first job. And you and Neera joined together. So, they joined the company together. Yeah, that's it. I have got some clips for you to show you about our culture, what I talk about. Because culture, I can talk about it, but I want to show you this innovation that we have. Oh, sorry, those are our strategic alliances. Want to talk about that? Anything else? Yeah. So, the video clips, please. After she spent two weeks, she said, I haven't seen this kind of culture anywhere in the world. And now they've got $100,000 of funding to study this culture further. So that's something I'm going to, be, I'm going to start for later in March end or, uh, sorry, May end or early June and taking this thing forward because they have found something very exciting in the culture we've created. So some glimpses from that. Batch body, this one. work earlier. This is a ring frame. It's dangerous because you're getting this, it's at a height, you're getting this can, uh, sorry, this, this uh, container, moving it, standing on top of it. designed by our workers. In fact, at a CI competition, they got national prize competing with all the top companies, Bajaj, Tata, all kind of companies. A textile worker, 8th class pass, that's what they've done. And got this idea from a sewing machine. <laughs> very safe and very easy to work. This is the kind of stuff our workers are able to do. Mixing spectivity. So this is our open end section where the mixing you need this is heavy, you have to keep spraying some water and some lubricants out there 
for easy spillability. It's tiring on the arms. From the fan. Pedestal fan and a nozzle and automatically sprays. So suddenly all that. And this was a theme we started, Mera Kaam Asan. I started this team talking to the workers, get, you make your work simpler and we'll help you in doing that. That's the idea purely from the workers. A lot of women employees coming into the company now. These are about 20 kgs or so, so it's difficult for women to handle. And it will break these crates also, damage these crates. Rollers. Simple. Woman power. Last one, this is my favorite example. This is an already improved version because earlier the person would bend down and that's how we're doing it. This was already an innovation that you have this trolley becomes easier, at least your back is in better control, but still not easy. As I said, quality is very important. Each spindle has to be inspected continuously. Most companies will not do it as with as detail as we do because any one spindle producing faulty yarn can create problems with that. We've got two of those videos. This is now the final trolley is made. It's got reflecting mirrors. It's got a stand, so you can see it very clearly. Torches in the right places, spare parts along with it. You can improve and correct it as it goes. <coughs> and now how he does the work. You've got a stand to note anything out there. It's called Lal Durbin after the name of the worker, Lal. Lal was the name of the worker who designed this. It's called Lal Durbin. This also got first prize nationally. And 50,000 people got it. Okay. Uh, want to show you two video clips of our handwriting yarn ad. So to show you we are a consumer product company also. Which ad, thankfully, not many of you have seen. Huh? What happened to handwriting yarn? Sorry, I think some uh, miscommunicate that the art, the art, uh, ad hasn't come. Uh, but uh, so we are present in normally channels which is women primarily housewives see. And we are present in uh, Hindi magazines primarily. Again, magazines that hive housewives to read. And especially in the season uh, of October to February. My apologies for that. And we have now a fabric presentation. Come. Very good afternoon. I'm highly obliged that I'm sharing this stage with Seth. That is a great honor for me. So, uh, firstly, I'll tell a bit about myself. I'm Pranam Shah. I am uh, the designer from my creative design cell, which is in Baddi. As I said, that we have two setups in Baddi, in Himachal Pradesh, and in the in Budmi, which is in Madhya Pradesh. So, uh, firstly, about design, what we exactly do. Uh, you know about all the international designers who work on different. Uh, uh, every season they work on different trends and different uh, different garments which you see in stores. In India also you see all the stores, you see color blurs, you see all the brands. They will have new merchandise every season. They will have a new new design every season. So what we actually do, why, why designers in textiles think 
that if we will not make fabrics which are according to their trends, how will they replicate it into garments? So our, our, our unit is actually a research based unit. What we do is, we, we, right now we are actually feeding all the international brands which we have heard till now. We talk about Gap, Banana Republic, American Eagle, Old Navy, MNS, as Sir said. So all the big brands in the world, we have Calvin Klein, Ralph Lauren, Chaps. So we are working with all of them. So why are they actually interested in our fabrics? Why are they bad for buying fabrics from us? We are providing services. We are actually uh, analyzing trends. We are in pace with all interna international trends, and uh, we have uh, like uh, we have around 20 people in our unit, 20 designers from NIFT. Uh, all of us work together. We have a uh, subscription of sites like WGSN. What is WGSN? WGSN is an international forecasting site. As we all know that uh, there are international trends. So these guys actually to keep watch on all international trends and what happens, what is going to happen in the next season. These guys actually interpret those things and they put it on site. We research through them. Second thing is this: we have a we have we have been working with all the very big brands of inter, in, in international as well as domestic brands. So we have we have we know their taste. Okay, they will interpret trends. Then how will they interpret trends? We know. So we incorporate that. And then we have a collaboration with Ricardo Rami. It is a design studio in Italy, in Prato. And then we have a designer from there who is uh, continuously working with us and giving us feedbacks and collections. So we all we consolidate all of those, these things and we make two collections every season in spring, summer and autumn, winter. That collection uh, is an interest of all the international brands which uh, we are working with as well as all the domestic brands we are working with. We showcase that collection in front of these brands and what happens is once we showcase these, these people actually see our fabrics which are obviously new. Every season we do 500, 600 new fabrics which have not been developed previously with any of the person in the market, any of the mills in the market. So, these, so we make 400 new fabrics and we present those fabrics with trends and stories. How like whatever fabric comes in the market, whatever we are presenting is just not just made like that. There is a whole research work, casuals, sports, formals, office wears, then what people like there is a new, new trend of street fashion what you are actually wearing and moving on streets, what, how, how you are, when, once you are going on hiking or trekking, what you are wearing, all these things. We analyze, we research on all these things, what is going to happen in the international market and then we make our collection. So, right now what, what collection I have is our spring summer collection. What we do is, we see the market like, uh, right now we are basically a cotton based company. We make all cotton based products but then we, because of the customer's requirement, we keep on invent, inventing and innovating new fabrics. Like we, we, uh, we were doing cotton, we, we, are, we were not very big time in women's wear, we were basically doing men's wear, but then uh, it was a market which has to be captured. So what we did, we started researching. We started blending cotton uh, fiber with different viscose fibers like modals, tensils, cupros. So now we have a range which is which is very appealing to international market because in international market, these people are these people actually want these blends. So this is when once this collection was made, we presented this collection to all international and domestic buyers, and it's a big time hit. So now we have the business we are getting from our women's wear collection is actually equal to the business we are getting from our men's wear collection. So it is equally divided now. So uh, the collection right now, what I have here is a blend of both. So I'll tell how. Uh, we were doing it in previous seasons, how we have invented in this season and what new we are doing. I will discuss a, a bit about the fabrics which we have uh, experimented and innovated through our research work and then we have offered in the market and it was a big time hit. Firstly about the products which were hit in the market. We, we all know about Indigos. We have been working with Indigos since very long. Uh, we, we, are wearing, we, we wear denims, we wear all the indigo shirts which are very popular in the market. But then there is, there is a constraint with indigo. What is the constraint with indigo is if you <coughs> buy an indigo pant, if you buy a denim pant, what happens is once you buy it, that time it has, uh, it is in one form and after three or four years or even three, four months, it fades out. It is the characteristics of indi characteristic of indigo which fades out. What we have done is we, we have made 
a version of indigo which actually doesn't trade out. It is actually not indigo. We have experimented with our reactive dyes and our Milan yarn capability which we have. We have experimented with that and we have made a, a version of indigo which is it doesn't fade out, which is which always remains the same and it is very appealing to. And then once we offered this particular research to the market, it was a big time hit. All the people working with us are interested in I will just give some of the fabrics with you guys. You can see. This is our like the C and pass out please. Yeah, the C and C and pass out. And the request is to put it back here because it's part of our collection. Yeah. Yeah, please. The whole idea was to give you an exposure to really what Vartman <laughs> does, which you can't get across in a concord. And and the the threads which are being used are mostly from source from our company only. We there are space dye threads which actually we have seen versions of ikats. There was a big time problem in the market that we were doing ikats. Women wear ikats a lot space type, but then doing it at the level of mill, in a mill, it was a very difficult task. We started experimenting with that and then we made a version of Ikat and which is there. You can you will see it in the form of fabric. The space type thread <coughs> and it spaces out. I think what you can do is later, you know, because yeah. there's tea out there, yeah. then people can come across and see it rather than because you know then you can't you talking something else, somebody is seeing something else. So exactly. But I think that's just to give an idea, this is what our design team is all about. Yes. Yeah? So this is the kind of space type which we are talking about. So Pranay, I think after that you can, you can hold forth yeah. as and when people come, you show them in fact. Yeah? Yes. Anything else you wanted to add? Yes, I just wanted to explain the stories. So we, we do different stories yeah. every season. We do forecasts which is being shared with all our customers internationally which has different stories from formals <coughs> to casuals to sports. So these are like every season we do a new forecast. We make new stories. So these are different stories which we have done, which will be there after uh, once we will <coughs> complete and you can come and see. So these are different stories which uh, hold sportswear, which hold uh, formals and occasional formals and then street and everything. So this is how we uh, make our collection and present it to our buyers. Questions. If any of you have any questions, we are here to answer some of those questions. And after that, Pranay is here, and all these fabrics are here. You can take a look at. Thank you for the question. What percentage of yarn currently is produced? Roughly one third. So, when, so uh, when I talk about that, I am not talking about the yarn which is produced in Vardhaman Yarn and Threads Limited, which goes which is all captive. So, I am not talking about that. But the other yarn, which means Vardaman textile and the other subsidiary VMT spinning, so from that yarn, <coughs> roughly one third is consumed internally. Uh, little less than one third is for the domestic market, little more than one third is exported out. So, uh, our intention is gradually fabric consumption proportion will increase, which means yarn sold to the fabric division will increase as proportion. And the idea just now is not to reduce the physical quantity of yarn, which means lo the logical answer would, uh, corollary would be a spinning expansion would be around the corner. But we haven't announced that as yet. But the intention is not to reduce the yarn capacity, <coughs> but not necessarily to increase the yarn capacity for outside market. And how big would be the Japanese market? We have not shared those figures, but it's, it's, it's relatively small, but relatively a better market. The, the total consumption in Japan would be more in terms of... I would have this. And currently, what Japan is sourcing these products from China? Or? No, these are Japan, Japan is making these products. Japan is, uh, and some from China. Uh, so, uh, you mentioned that the number is... Can you get a mic so that people outside can also hear that? Yeah, you mentioned that the depreciation number is the kind of due to the change in the country that to high by about 170 and equals to 70. We are probably crossing about 485 and equals to 70. So, we are probably crossing about 485 and equals to 70. So, we are probably crossing about 485 and equals to 70. So, we are probably crossing about 485 and equals to 70.
485 is for the year uh, 2015. It could be lower by 60, 70 for the next year. Okay. But uh, anyway, higher than as, as it used to be. After 15 also, I think, will come down by another 50 crore or so. Okay. It's a, just an estimate because... Uh, we haven't made precise calculations. Yes, please. So we have seen a lot of volatility in cotton prices because of China policy and all, They're subsidizing them. How do you see that market? Can you throw some light on that? Very difficult to predict what another country would do, but uh, especially China. But we kept feeling that what China was doing was unsustainable, so you can't keep stockpiling cotton. So which is why we were predicting that China will stop this policy at some stage. It was not possible to predict exactly when they will stop. And we knew the moment they will stop, the cotton price will crash. Now, what happens is in an agricultural produce, when the production of that commodity is higher than the consumption of the commodity, the prices should fall. But that was not happening because China was buying and therefore, overall, despite every year the last five years, we are adding to the cotton stocks, the prices were, falling, uh, prices were high. So, the moment China stopped this policy, the prices started falling. So prices seem to have settled down. This year still the consumption of cotton will be lower than the production of cotton. But next year, because of lower prices of cotton, the area under cultivation in cotton is expected to fall globally. Next year the expectation is that cotton prices, uh, cotton production and cotton consumption will match. And the year after that onwards, we will start eating into the inventory, which means inventory will start coming down. So, which means, as of now, the likelihood seems to be that cotton prices seem to have bottomed out and will start gradually rising, mildly rising or remain stable for the next year or two. So, FY17, we may have inventory again? Possibly. I have no idea. So, but how that could impact our company as far as uh, this cotton upside, ups and downs coming? It doesn't impact our company that much. It just reduces the, uh, if the cotton prices come down, yarn prices also fall. So, it only uh, affects our company as it did the last two quarters. That when it starts falling after stocking is over, then it brings in some inventory devaluation. Yeah, except inventory loss, how, how, how? I think when cotton prices are down, consumption would go up, so it's actually better for the industry. So we believe lower prices are better. Which kind of cotton do we procure? We procure all kinds of cotton. We buy all cottons from India. So a 90, roughly 90-95 percent of our cotton is procured from India. So we buy Punjab J34, we buy Shankar from Gujarat, we buy MECH cotton, we buy MCU5, DCH32 from Tamil Nadu. We buy Giza from Egypt, we buy Pima from California, we also buy the other American cotton, we buy Australian cotton, but roughly 90% is Indian, 5 to 10 percent would be imported cotton. Your export, import exporting. I'm sorry? The product that you manufacture, what percentage is exported and what are the plants? Roughly one third is exported. One third. There's a question from here, then we'll come back to you. Oh, sir. <coughs> Uh, you mentioned that your inventory starts from March and April. Uh, that's why you, you no, know, no, inventory buildup has high. Yeah, bunching up uh, the buildup of inventory starts from January. So, in, in that case, are we considered giving additional information for providing 12 month average inventory? I think that's a good idea. We'll do that in this fashion. Good idea. Thank you. Yes, please. Sir, for a million uh, spindles, uh, what would be our cotton requirement, assuming 30 pounds? Uh, I can't give that figure, but our buying of cotton is roughly about uh, 1.2 million bales, roughly. Right? Roughly 1.2 million. And sir, if you assume that prices might be bottomed out uh, this year, uh, do, uh, do you expect that uh, our inventory holding in fact would be on a higher side than 8 months? Very difficult to predict that. We don't, we don't, we don't normally comment on our inventory policy of cotton. As other than that 6 to 8 months stock of cotton on 31st March, that is the only like a, like a uh, recording tape, that's what you hear from me. Uh, on acrylic balance sheet, uh, you have about 220 crore uh, cash. Sir, uh, uh, this 20,000 ton capacity was in July. I believe about since last 10 years. 
No, uh, it was 18,000 tons in a setter and 2,000 tons happened because of deal bottlenecking. This was about 4 or 5 years ago. Okay. Yeah. Sir, so what would be the uh, if, if you go for an expansion? What it will not be an acrylic fiber. I'm sorry? It will, if we go in for an expansion, yes. it will, the probability of going in an acrylic fiber expansion is very low. Okay. So it will be a diversification. So we have examined and we are currently examining technical textiles, we are examining some other areas, which is why we are not able to make an announcement because still Vardhaman is a cautious company. Whenever we look at a new area, we spend little more time in studying that than many other companies would. Okay, uh, so even merger can be an option? I don't know. So it can be an option or not? It's always an option. But uh, clearly, as promoters, we have increased our stake in Vardhaman yeah, acrylic. So first with the buyback, and then the creeping acquisition, the intention is to take at least up to 75%. So we should be completing that, or we would have completed that, I guess. So uh, the intention is very clear. We want to increase our hold on the acrylic by the company. So, so just one question on cotton yarn spread. Oh, yeah. yeah. So how do you look at cotton yarn spread and also in the light of some Chinese manufacturing capacity also coming back with change in policy? So how would you actually look at cotton yarn spread? Would you, would you suggest It's difficult to predict spread? that. Which is why I'm saying that our, our EBITDA margins will keep fluctuating. Yes. So I, I, I can't make any guess on that. I, I, my feeling is that with costs in China rising, over the next few years, when will that tipping point happen, I don't know, but India will continue to be more competitive. And Indian cotton is still the cheapest cotton in the world. So uh, uh, Indian textile mills will continue to benefit. And Indian cotton productivity, <coughs> farm productivity is amongst the lowest in the world, yeah. one third of China. So it can only go up with better irrigation over the next few years. So we believe that India will continue to have an advantage of competitively priced cotton. Right. And so just one more question on the fabric business. So how large is, so what is, what is our vision on the fabric business? So do we want to eventually focus more on the fabric business? No, that is, business? that is a clear direction that yeah. fabric will become a larger proportion of the business. That is very clear. But we haven't given any number of yeah. So in terms of relative size of the two businesses, any, anything Maybe like it can become equal in times to come. But I don't know. We haven't decided. We just know that fabric will grow faster than yarn. Yeah. So at some stage, the probability that fabric will become equal to yarn, it can be seen. Yeah, but any timeline on that? No. Sure. Thank you. Yes, For how long quality of the cotton is not affected? I, I'm trying to get this. For how long quality of the cotton is not affected? At least six, eight months, one year, it's okay. After that, the quality starts deteriorating. So if China is uh, finding up the inventory levels, so it means... Uh, the quality of that cotton, uh, I, I, uh, my sympathies with the people who will be buying that uh, <laughs> stock cotton. And uh, second is this uh, e-commerce uh, business is now growing and also acceptable in the market. So do you guys have any plan? No, we have no plan. As of now. Uh, again, one is e-commerce as a business, very clearly no plans for that. But for our own products to be using the e-commerce platform, it's a possibility. So uh, the new consumer pack, we have brought in a new, improved, relaunched a old brand we had, Cuddles. So I think that is more suitable for the e-commerce platform. But we will be using somebody else's platform or developing our own platform for our own products only. But there is no clarity out there so far. But we are not getting into the e-commerce business. We leave it for the big boys. Yes, that's why there's a question here. We have top 5 customers for uh, yarn and fabrics. We how, haven't the, made how the prices are set? Uh, we haven't made that public, but the big customers that we have are Gap, CNA, MNS, uh, Uniqlo, H&M, but we haven't made any announcement that these are the top five customers. Prices set in negotiation with the customers. They are based on the uh, annual price are set or? No, there is no annual price set. Prices are negotiated. It could be for a season. For some customer, it could be for a year. So it depends on customer to customer. But normally, we don't like to fix long-term prices. Because when, the, when it is in the customer's favor, 
they make sure that they ask you for it. When it's in your favor, they say, please pass us on the games. So we don't like, normally we don't have long term uh, contract. In a yarn business, normally two months forward, and we uh, take the gains or losses as they happen. What would be the total contribution on the top five customers? We don't have, we don't announce that. <coughs> but it's very fragmented. As far as the total business is concerned. In the fabric business, it will be more concentrated. But as a total company, the top five customers would be very fragmented. Is there a question here? Just taking this question forward, basically, if uh, the quality of inventory goes down, will that not disturb prices going forward as in for companies? Because the unorganized market will then start, uh, start buying partner at cheaper prices, the lower quality of quality is going See, the good customers will not buy from those people. Those Okay, but uh, what does that indicate to the cotton prices going forward? Can't comment. Wouldn't, wouldn't it be logically on the lower side? Uh, chances that China, my belief is China is a country which has which, which got good smarts, from my belief. So the chances that they will distort the market totally and disturb their own players and everybody in the world, the chances seem to be low, but one can't predict. Yes, please. With the government, Chinese government, being almost kind of double the market prices to the farmers there, Chinese production hardly sustained. So, do you see the Chinese production kind of falling, moving down faster? Yes, than of course. Despite this, they're falling. So, the, now that the prices in China also have crashed by whatever 30 percent or 40 percent, do you see the production collapsing even further? Collapsing is the wrong word, but definitely China coming down faster. 10, 15 percent or something. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. No, which is why we feel that once the balance gets restored, eventually cotton prices will, may start rising up again. We believe that. That could happen. So, uh, the way I look at it, what you are saying is you are increasingly more going to fabrics. Correct. Now, if you look at the value chain that you have given, the highest set, you know, there are three points where you can get very good gains. One is when you convert cotton to yarn, wherein there is high volatility to him since that has to be compensated by Hamartins. And the second is from grey to processed. And the ones that we are trying to get. So I'm just trying to understand why it is that, because that you said is relatively stable margins. And why would that happen? And if processed the fabric is a very difficult business to enter. Very difficult. Why, what, is there a technical aspect to it? And if it is, for you as a company, when you are growing, say, five years ahead, Going more into process is what you are kind of planning to. How would you? Is there a skill set uh, change that would be required in the company? How are you looking to address that? Sure. So the fabric processed fabric business is a back breaking business. Uh, it's a very difficult business. Barriers to entry are extremely high in this business. Uh, and the country is littered with companies that got into this business and had difficult times. So, Vardaman also went through its difficult times. When we started our processed fabric in 2000, 2001, if you look back at the balance sheet at that time, it's a disastrous balance sheet. And that was when the profitability of the yarn business could sustain the dent because of the fabric. And my wife, she had set up the business. So, I know the stress which was there at home at that point in time. So, uh, Arvind also had a serious problem when they went to the fabric. They had to get major write-offs. Uh, so even when the, when the most successful two textile companies have also gone through a very difficult period in the fabric business, processed fabric. So the barriers to entry in this business are very high. Now, once you entered into this business and stabilized yourself, after that it's any other business. No? The skills are available in the country in the company, the market is established, the customer base is established, the product is known, so now you know what you are getting into. Now it is just expansion of capacity. At that time it is establishing a new business. What are the barriers perceived? Barriers are several. First of all, when you set up a plant, a spinning plant, you know it is a commodity. You know Shankar 6, everyone knows, buy Shankar 6 cotton from Gujarat. Make 30 scone. Buy machines from Lakshmi Retail. Buy auto corners from Murata or uh, Schlagfoss. Everyone with little bit of understanding knows how to set up a spinning plant. You know where to buy it from. You know the prices. You can sell it. You lose money. But you can produce and sell. Moment you get into finished fabric, what do you produce? So you invested 
150 crore rupees, put up a 30 million meter plant, what do you produce? Because now, the moment you get into fabric, it's a fashion business. So, if I want to make this kind of shirt, then I need this quality of fabric and this color of fabric. So, you don't even know what to produce. And then, to get the quality right is very difficult. Now, and then in a hundred thousand meters per day, thirty million meters, hundred thousand meters per day, you produce, you get an order of ten thousand meters, you produce that. Now, such high capacity machines, your utility costs, your startup costs, everything goes through the roof. Where do you get the workers from? Because you need workers to operate all the lines. So, every part of it, the business part of it, the cost part of it, the ramping up part of it, every part is different. Is processing also environmentally troublesome issue? No, it's expensive, but not troublesome. Of course, of course. You have to comply with the rules of the law, and especially large companies like us. So, in fact, when some of the large investors, even recently, Avi had come with me, and some very large investors had come with me, we took them and, and showed them some of our plant, and we are putting up a zero discharge plant also in that Budni location. So, we have uh, there are government norms for different kind of discharges. So we have land discharge permission in Budni in our Madhya Pradesh factory, which is why we have 200 acres of land for plantation, which is where the tiger entered because of, it was a forest kind of a thing. Sorry. <coughs> Sanjay, I'll just call you back. So water treatment is something we take very seriously. In fact, uh, I remember in Badi when uh, the pollution control guy had come for inspection. In front of him, I took the output of the pollution environment plant and I drank it in front of him. I drank it. I'm not saying it's portable water. But I'm saying it is not poisonous. If I could drink it in front of him, it's not poisonous. So it, it is treated well. Of course, later on I said, what the hell have I done? Drank that water in front of him. But the approval came very fast after that. <laughs> So, what capacity are running all of plants? Sorry? What capacity all of plants are We are running at almost full capacity. So, don't expect any revenue growth this year. We are running. And how do you see Padmana? After three years from now, this part of this expansion will be operational. So, there will be some improvement in fabric. Some of the consolidation effort that we have made will be bearing fruit. Some already bearing fruit. Some will bear fruit. The company will be more controlled. In the IT system will be far better. More automation would have happened in our processes. Uh, we will be ready for a major growth or an acquisition. Balance sheet will be far stronger. Dividend payouts probably could be higher because major de debt would be paid by this year is a major year of debt repayment. About 700, 700 crores of debt is to be repaid this year. Another 450 crores next year. So, two years of really large debt repayments. So, after that, the probability of dividend payouts increasing would be higher. Will you be required capex for the uh, fabrics and uh, The capex that we require mm -hmm. now is much smaller compared to the size of the company than what we have done in the past. So, there will unlikely to be any stress on the balance sheet in terms of our expansion plans. And we have no capital raising plans, no plans to dilute in the foreseeable future. So, uh, all earnings, whatever, are going to go to existing shares, shareholders. So, we can see a net debt uh, reducing to zero? No. Eventually, some more expansion will come up. What's the net debt right now? About point, I think 31st March will be about point 0.7? Net. Net. About 0. 0.7. <coughs> absolute minimum is around 200 to 2,000 crore as long term debt. Long term so there are liquid investments on in all our subsidiaries as well as in Vadman Textile itself. So that's why the net debt. Okay. Yes, please. So given there are so many distress assets in the sector today, would you consider uh, an organic uh, growth? Of course, we are open to that. But moment Vardaman steps in as a buyer, prices go up. <coughs> but 
how does it, the uh, Antich still stand? Because I mean, when you go for a greenfield one, uh, you know, as you mentioned, the replacement cost has gone up and it takes a lot of more time. Yeah, but you see, uh, for us, it is very clear we like to operate in a particular way. We, we cannot operate an indisciplined plant. Unfortunately, many of the promoters don't invest that much in building discipline and culture in the plant. So the culture that we find is not amenable to our kind of working, we rather leave that asset. Or the kind of, you know, the layout she's made, which is amenable to good quality product, we rather stay away from that. Or if that plant is available in a state that we don't like, we like to stay away from that. Because for us, it is very important, there are many states in the country we find uninvestment, uh, which are not investable from our point of view where corruption levels are higher, we stay away from those states. Where labor trouble is higher as a culture, we stay away from those states. So, we like a few states. And we like, if in those states that we are present, we get a good acquisition capability, possibility, uh, with good culture, we are open to that. Yes, it's really, so, what I was trying to uh, you know, get a handle on, would you be open to something like that, or say even subcontracting, what I was trying to say? Subcontracting is not something we are keen on, okay. but we are open to acquisitions. Okay. So, is there any other strategy by which we could increase our asset turnover ratios because, you know, that's what... No, by, by better valuation and our fabric business, there is lot more scope to add value. And that's what we are focusing on. Especially with our Japanese strategic alliance, the kind of learning we're getting from them is phenomenal. So, the first Japanese alliance was of setting up the plant and quality. That's a different kind of strategic alliance. <laughs> this one is on the product, market and so on, the kind of products we're getting through them and their help is helping us improve our business overall. And we see a lot of scope to improve. Yes, please. Uh, I mean, we are adding 50 million meters of fabric capacity, right? When is it expected to be commissioned? Uh, this was uh, about three years total. So, it will come in phases, but overall by 2018 or so, it will be expected to be commissioned. Just one question on the governing division. So, what exactly is the difficulty or the reason? No, difficulty is making money. Yeah, that's true, but what exactly is the problem? You see, again, a new business to build up, it takes yeah. time. Yeah. Putting up the plant is the easy part. Mm -hmm. Because again, like I said about fabric, so about garment. Mm -hmm. That first you get orders. You get orders first, you get products first. Once you get orders, then you have, we like to train our workers afresh. We don't like train workers from outside. You train workers, they leave. There's attrition which happens. So it takes some time before the culture to build up, for workers to become stable and so on. So And productivity to go up. So that's now taking shape. But wouldn't the existing customers on the yarn as well as fabric be also customers on the garment in the region? Some of them would be. Yeah. But for the order to come, it still takes time. No? You, every customer wants to see capability first. Right. Capability will come and orders come. So what comes first? So, garment still you can handle because the capex is much lower. That's right. In process fabric, the capex is so much larger. Hmm. As it's, it's a killer right. that production comes first or order comes first, which comes first. Right. So, we have we've gone through that pain at a time when we are not that tracked. Right. So, we are okay. And, and sir, would you also look at something niche in the sense of infant garment? Because that is one no. phase. No, no, no. We are very clear, we are a large group, we will go only into high quality mass, we will not touch women. So, men, men clothing where simple, where the fabric quality is more important than the designing of the apparel. In women, the fabric quality is important and the design and then you come to the fashion act. Then an entrepreneur driven business model is a better business model than a large company. And we don't want to do everything for all for customers. We are very clear what we can be good at will be only in those areas. Other place may be more profitable, but we'll stay with that. Yeah, just in line with the same question. So, uh, I think you have mentioned that this yeah. is important. There are difficulties in the garment business. But I've seen three of your products, which I think you need to make product for Raymond's. Those products are extra, uh, are of very fine quality. And Raymond's instead of the garment facility is getting you made it. So, I think the first level is... Now reached. Yes, it's already reached. Yeah, now reached. Yeah. Now. So, now we are making money. Then you have to make adequate money. 
And after that you say, do you want to really grow this business or not? So we haven't reached a stage we can say that yes, we want to grow this business. But at least now we are not unhappy with the business. As a company, we are still not very sure. We are not there. We are not there. That's why I am saying please look at it as an option. It's a future possibility that this could become a 500 or 1000 crore business in the future. But this business can be extended very fast in case you would... Vardama never does anything fast. <laughs> Uh, sorry, never the wrong word. We rarely do anything fast. Yeah. Sir, what's a hedging policy, sir? Hygiene? Hygiene, hygiene. Okay. Hygiene, oh, okay. Uh, sorry, I thought hygiene. Uh, a hedging policy uh, on cotton we can't hedge because uh, very little, because we are allowed to hedge only what we actually import. So we are not allowed to hedge Indian cotton on New York Exchange. And Indian exchange is not that strong as yet. Eventually they will become strong. So then we like to start hedging more. On terms of forex, we normally hedge between 20 and 40 percent of our next one year's foreign exchange. Imports we hedge immediately. So that's the policy. And we don't want to get into complex derivatives. Yes, please. We mentioned outlook is it's always volatile. Okay, so you're at 15% margin now. No, no. We we will be this year also. I believe 18. So our belief is 18 to 22% is a reasonable range. And how do you see the dynamic between uh, polyester and cotton? Because this time also polyester is cracked. See, uh, any customer who uses <coughs> cotton will use cotton. Uh, globally, polyester as a proportion of total consumption is already very high and will continue to grow. There is no way that cotton will become a dominant fabric as far as consumption is concerned. So cotton as a total basket will continue to reduce. But again, we are a processor of materials. So for us, it doesn't matter if polyester becomes more in vogue, we can increase the proportion of blend. We are already blended yarns and so we are not too worried with that. But we believe is that <coughs> for high quality still, cotton and cotton predominant blends, I mean I tried wearing a polyester cotton shirt or somebody <coughs> gave me one shirt and I wore it and I, and I said it's not nice. I looked at polyester cotton, threw it away. I will not buy, I will not wear a polyester cotton shirt, but that's my choice. But there are many sport people wear full synthetic shirts. That's why I tried. Everybody talks about this wicking facility and so on, and dry fit and so on. So I also bought this uh, synthetic t shirt from one of the sports brands. Never worn it after that. I tried it, to be fair, but it didn't suit me. Now I'm an old fashioned 50 year old guy. Youngsters wear synthetics, so it's okay. But I'm saying our market is men's shirts, women's trousers, uh, and men's trousers, women's trousers, and women's trousers. Not the fashion end of the business in terms of evening wear. We are not in that. So we are in everyday wear, <coughs> which is a really the mass market of the higher end customer. We are not in the lower end brands at all. Which uh, technical textile will you get into? No, no. I said we are examining all these areas. No decision has been taken. Yeah. 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 About 600 crores. 580 to 600 crores. Come over time. So your revenue growth will be based on the annual growth going ahead? Uh, in the next year or two, unlikely to be much of revenue growth. So a little bit of revenue, realize it's going up, there's no capex capex coming up. The impact of this fabric consumption expansion will only happen in 1617. Uh, so around 2 to 5% growth? We don't make any. Yeah. So uh, I'm here over tea uh, and uh, we are here with the presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much and my apologies once again to make some of you stand like So sorry. <laughs> thank you so much.